Formula is a compact LSM launch coaster located in Energylandia in Poland. And a little fun fact, Formula actually opened before any of their current major rides. And since Formula, they have opened four major new roller coasters, including a water roller coaster. So if you want to see me build any of the other roller coasters from Energylandia, be sure to leave a comment down below. But for now, let's crack on with day one of building Formula. I'm going to try and build a full roller coaster in one week. Editing Ryan here. Um, it did not take one week. Uh, it took two weeks. That's right. I actually put a poll out on my YouTube community page asking you guys to pick what you want me to build. The options were between Helios or Formula from Energylandia and it was a close call but Formula did win. And lucky for me, I already have a train design which is very close to what Formula is. But for now, let's get started with the actual build. Whoa, and to actually kickstart us, we actually do have a brake run that already exists. I didn't take this apart from the previous two projects. Although it will need editing because the angle is a little bit too steep for Formula. Formula's brake run is a lot more flat. But just before we get started on the layout, I actually want to print out you know, a bunch of red ones of these just so that we can actually have a train that's working so we can test whilst we're building the layout. So let's unload the current white filament and load in some of this red. So let's take these files and of course, loading in some different filament. And off it goes to the printer. And hopefully in about seven hours, we're gonna have a finished train. I actually do have to do one more thing before we start building. We only have a two car train. And that was because Yukon Striker only used a two car train. So when I made the brand new V2 train system, I only printed two of them out for myself. Formula is of course a four car train. So let's just steal a couple of these units from my shop. I'm sure the boss won't care that I'm stealing two of them. Setting up the other two cars. One, two, three. There we go. Four car train fully set up and ready to go. With the train finished, it was time to start working on the actual layout. I started by taking the brake run from Yukon Striker and making it much shallower. This is because Formula's brake run is almost fully flat. I know it's not much, but I have tidied up all of the stuff around like the edges of the room. So hopefully we have you know, the maximum amount of space that we have to build this. The next thing we need to do is actually map out the floor plan so that we know exactly where we're building each element. Now, I didn't realize this, but this is actually really helpful. So formula on the Google images here is actually kind of just like almost a big rectangle. My building space on the floor is also just a big rectangle. So I'm hoping we can just scale this perfectly and fit it in the room. Lay down a bunch of these connect rods and try and mimic the layout um, on the floor down there. I didn't do that for the entire layout, it was only for this first half where you have the sort of overbank and airtime hill and the first corkscrew just because I wanted to get the sizing correct. Moving on now, I actually began work on the very first element and because we're building backwards, technically, it's this switchback airtime hill, sort of like a little bit of an S turn, but more of an airtime hill rather than low to the ground, and then just gave it a test run. And the next morning, I actually completed the next element, which was this overbank turn. It's only a small one, but I decided to give it a test run anyway, because the red 3D printed seats had finished. Now, I know technically this isn't the correct 3D printed train for this build, but I just didn't have enough time to design a whole new top for it. Ignore the noise in the background, I just need to print an order out. But I feel like now that I've got this overbank done and the airtime, well, twisted airtime hill and the brake run, I should probably finish off day one, which was actually meant to be building the turn into the station and then the turn into the lawn. Of course, that won't take very long because there's only a little bit to build. And then after that, we can actually build this corkscrew that goes over this airtime hill and down this side. The station and the launch were only straight pieces of track, so they were quite easy to do. Right, let's see if the train is able to not only make it to the end, which we know, but crawl off the end of the brake run, round and back into the station. Up it nicely from here. Okay, will it get round the corner? Oh, not quite. Okay, I've edited it, it's now one brake bar and I've moved it back a bit, so hopefully it works. Drop it with its minimum amount of speed. Yep, 
Yep, just about. And once I knew that everything worked, it was time to start the first inversion of the build. I've actually got a really useful tip that will help out with getting really, really nice heart lining. If you actually use these two internal holes on the cross ties and place some tubing through them on either side, it tends to make really, really consistent twists with less bumpy track. The next section that I wanted to build was this sideways airtime hill that goes over the brake run. I actually built it too big at first and it had too much speed so I had to lower it and then after that was finished I began work on the turn that goes through the tunnel. At this point I was running out of space in my room so I actually had to make the turn a lot smaller than I wanted to build it and then using the same method as earlier I ended up starting work on the other corkscrew and I think shaping wise this corkscrew actually turned out better than the first one. With most of the layout complete we only had to finish the airtime hill, the final turn and the Immelman. The airtime hill was quite easy I just had to build a little platform so that it could go over the track underneath it and then after the airtime hill was finished it was just a case of building this sharp turn and then after the turn I continued the launch all the way into the entrance to the Immelman and now to complete the Immelman and of course the whole coaster as a whole I built using flexible rods and the tubing method that I showed earlier and I just sort of had the track loose dangling and then built the structure around it and now that the coaster was complete it was time to take it outside and show you the results First, a quick message from today's sponsor, me. I've actually been working super hard over the past 6 to 12 months to produce not only the best Kinex 3D printed trains, but also recently these 3D printed desktop models. So if you want to pick up anything that I just showed and you want to help support future projects, then head to the link in the description to go over to my store page. If you enjoyed this video today, please consider subscribing, we're on our way to 30,000 subscribers. And if you want to further support what I do here on this channel, please consider becoming a channel member. Channel members get access to videos between 12 and 24 hours early. And if you're a YouTube channel member, you also get an extra 15% off discount code to use on my online store. Now it's time for the POV.